All right, so let's begin our first lecture in the spectral sequences course. And let me just remind you that if we think about X, some space, usually I'll mean a CW complex, then we can take the singular cohomology of X, and this is a graded ring. And it's a graded ring via the cup product. So I can think of this ring as uh, being built of the direct sum of all the nth cohomologies of x. And what do I mean by it's a graded ring? Well, if I take some little x in the nth cohomology and some little y in the nth cohomology, then the cup product should land in the n plus mth cohomology. And in fact, this isn't just a graded ring, it's what we call graded commutative, because this cup product satisfies this nice property. If I multiply x times y, well, I can exchange the order at the cost of a sign, and that sign is just negative one to the product of the degrees of x and y, so here n times m, and then I can swap the order. Okay, so this leads us to study graded rings and modules, which we'll talk about in the next video. Okay, so now uh, if A lives inside X, and let's just say this is a CW pair, really I just need a good pair, then that's going to give me a short exact sequence of chain complexes. So I could take the singular chains on A, and that maps to the singular chains on X, maps to the singular chains on X relative to A. And here we can just take that uh, to be defined to be the chains on X mod the chains on A. And a short exact sequence of chain complexes is always going to give us a long exact sequence in homology via the snake lemma, so we get this long exact sequence in homology. And of course, that just looks like the nth cohomology, sorry, homology of A maps to the nth homology of X, maps to the nth relative homology, and then we've got our connecting homomorphism to the n minus first homology of A, and so on. Okay, and since we're working with CW complexes, we could use excision here to say this is really the homology or the reduced homology of X mod A. Now, we also get a long exact sequence in cohomology. And that looks pretty similar, but the arrows go the other way, of course. So here I've got the nth cohomology of the pair and my connecting homomorphism. So now my differential goes up in degree. And the point of me reminding you about all of this is that we often will try to compute, say, the cohomology of some space x. And in general, that's kind of hard, but one thing we can do is use some nice subcomplex. And if we know the quotient, then maybe we can bootstrap our way up to the cohomology of x. Okay, so one of our goals is really to extend this technique. And what do I mean by that? Well, really we're starting with this idea of this CW pair. And we could think of that as giving us a cofiber sequence. 
I just mean a nice sequence that gives us this long exact sequence in homology or cohomology. But we could filter this thing a bit more. So I think I'm going to run out of space here. Maybe let's see if I can fit it. Maybe I find two stages of this thing. So I have an A0 and an A1 living inside X. Well, A0 living inside A1 in a nice way is going to give me a cofiber sequence. And A1 living in X in a nice way is going to give me a cofiber sequence. And then I'll have these filtration quotients. So what I mean is this first piece is a cofiber sequence. And then this next piece is a cofiber sequence. And so what I'm going to end up here with is two long exact sequences. And they sew together in kind of a nice way. So I could take these two long exact sequences and try to bootstrap my way to the cohomology of my space. OK, and in a sense, all I really needed to do that was to look at each of these filtration quotients. I need to start with A0, A1 mod A0. So that quotient together might help me get to A1. And then that information together with X mod A1 will help me get to the cohomology of X. Oops, I don't know what color we're erasing. OK. So we want to extend that idea even further. Maybe let me try to leave it on the page there. So I want to start with some A0 up to A1 and so on, some long filtration. And I could keep going. Maybe let's assume that for now that this stops at some finite stage. And that's my x. I don't know why I made that a capital N. OK, and uh, then I have all of these filtration quotients. So all of these are supposed to be good inclusions so that this is a cofiber sequence here. So I've got my cofiber sequence as before. And then my next filtration quotient assuming that was a good inclusion. What you can't see here is that my cat is bumping into me as I do this, so don't mind the bad handwriting and squiggles. I can't blame it all on her, but she's partly to blame. <laughs> um, OK, so anyway, then I, ha I keep going. I've got all of these filtration quotients. And she's trying to stop the video. OK, and so on up to the last one. OK, and uh, the point here is that I'll have all of these cofiber sequences together. They'll give me a bunch of long exact sequences I can sew together. And so what I'm going to do is use that to cook up essentially a lot of long exact sequences and we'll collect all that data and call it a spectral sequence. So these are really just lots of long exact sequences sewn together. And remember that in our first meeting, I said that a spectral sequence is really just a big bookkeeping device. This is what I mean, it's gonna keep the books of all of these long exact sequences together and allow us to forget some of the details. And the whole point is that then we'll be able to use that to bootstrap up, hopefully, to learn about the cohomology of the space we filtered X.